All right, so why AI clouds? Why is there this investment? Why are everyone talking about AI clouds right now? There's, there's, there's a few main reasons, which is the age of AI is now. 85% um, of executives say they won't achieve their growth objectives without scaling AI. 71% in the state, 75% globally say they think they risk going out of business without being able to scale AI in the next five years. And so when we look at AI clouds, they're, they're, what we're finding is they're helping customers move past the sticking point where they get stuck in the pilot phase. And the pilot phase, we have our own AI maturity model that you're, that you're looking at here. And in our end phase where we're helping our customers get to, and we have many successful customers who are really deep into their overall uh, phases of AI maturity is to make them an AI customer. Um, where they're actually creating new revenue streams, lines of business off of AI because they've gone so far through that journey. But most of the market is still stuck in the pilot phase. And this happens for a whole variety of reasons. And one of the ones that has impacted me um, or that I've been a part of the most is when I get a project, um, obviously on the business side, when I get a project and they say, hey, here's the score, here's something that's predicting X. And I say, okay, well, how does it work? And then they, they can't we can't have that interchange. I don't understand. We can't explain it, which then drives to a lack of business adoption. And so AI clouds are helping to solve these problems, bridging that communication divide between the technical makers and the business users who are consuming AI. And we'll talk a bit about that today, about um, some of the, the products that we built that help to bridge that divide. And then our partnership coming in and helping customers really takes them through this overall uh, transformation and helps them be successful with that transformation. So one of the things we see when we come to customers is, hey, I just spent nine months and it might've been a small team of data scientists for, for a few months working on an AI project that didn't end up getting used or adopted. And what we see when that is like a data scientist starts working on a project, they're not exactly sure what the business requirements were, they're just sort of trying to figure it out and they end up having to toil on a notebook for a long time, figuring out, trying to get that model perfected over and over again. And when they're trying to get that model in production, they may run into additional hurdles working with IT. Maybe they have some home-built deployment system. There's nothing that just really easily puts it in production. And then when they take those predictions, sort of what I was describing before that in terms of my interactions, when they take those predictions, they say, hey, here's, here's a score for this. They had, they have trouble explaining that to the business user. And so then it's not necessarily adopted. And if that happens, you take all of this, these man hours and sometimes man years of work and they don't end up actually driving business value. And what we've seen with our AI cloud is we've had customer, I'm not saying every project takes two weeks, you see two weeks on the slide. That's not true of everything, but we actually have a lot of customers who have gone from concept to adopted model in the form of an AI application in under two weeks. And that's not, that's, that has been repeatable and we have numerous companies doing that. And what it really starts is now it's, it can be a data scientist, but it could also be an analyst or a developer or a data engineer who's then working with the business user from the start on a problem that's already been defined. We then have a whole set and we'll go through them today of no code and auto ML services that build really highly accurate models in, in days or even hours. So an example can be, they could build that model in hours, bring the business user in, look at how the features are, are and, the, and the feature importance coming out, have a discussion about that, reiterate on it and get a model tuned up very quickly that the business understands. And so then when it goes into, hey, we're gonna make this in production, they just one click deploy it. And then with a low code application development framework that we have, which we'll talk about H2O Wave, they can wrap that model in an application, have the business consume it right off the bat. And so they're going all the way from conception to usage and consumption in a very short period of time. And this is, this is time to value. And this is one of the main reasons we see uh, AI cloud adoption happening in all types of organizations. Next is once you hit that scale phase of maturity, so saw that maturity curve. So you've gotten some value, you've proven value in the organization and, and the organization starts to grow. You're adding more layers and leadership. You have executives in the data sciences group. You start having models everywhere. Right. So you have, hey, I got I got I might have some models running in Snowflake. We'll talk a little bit more about how we support that today. I got some development models and some of those are with H2O and some of those might be outside of H2O. I got some production models specifically in applications or in ML flow. I have some in H2O ML ops are all over and I need a single system of record to manage that. I need to know if those models are still accurate. I need to know if there's bias that's that we're starting to see in models when they're in production. And then I always want to be 
you know, continuously getting better. So these AB champion, uh, challenger champion uh, models where we're just, we're testing, do we have a better model? Do we have a better model uh, constantly? And so this is another reason we see AI clouds being adopted across the organization is you have time to value is the first one. And then this is management at scale uh, and being able to understand an entire lineage across the model, uh, the model life cycle. 